Now we get to the heart of one of uh, the biggest, um, most important concepts, or series of concepts, within physics. There's Newton's three laws. We want to look at what they are, and then we'll describe them in a little bit of detail. And I just really, throughout this whole discussion, I think it's very important to focus on uh, the concepts... Don't get too hung up on, on the particular words, the memorized statement of these. I'm not going to give you a, a statement that you can memorize, but I want to explain the concepts in such a way that you understand the concepts. Then you can uh, take the meaning, those concepts, and you can communicate them in many different situations. That's one of the really important um, aspects of physics, is understanding concepts so that you can apply them successfully. So first of all, Newton's three laws. Um, the very first one, and you don't need to know the order and the numbers and all of that, we use them for reference. So if we talk about Newton's first law, it's easy to understand. The first one, we um, consider a, an object, it might be a car in this case, or a vehicle, or a brick on wheels, whatever, and it's continuing along at a constant velocity unless an external force acts on it. Or, the alternative is, it's uh, sitting on the spot, where the velocity is zero, and it maintains that zero velocity unless a force acts on it, an external force. Okay, Within itself, it can't apply a force to push itself apart, and we get into that in Newton's third law, but the main concept here is that objects at rest, you might have heard it stated this way, objects at rest will stay at rest, and objects undergoing constant motion, okay, rest is a form of constant motion, um, they will stay in constant motion, uh, unless an external force acts on them. Okay? So force is needed to change motion. And you can't apply it from within. Okay, It's the old classic. If you are standing on a skateboard, you can't push yourself. You can't blow on a sail when you're on the boat and make it go. Um, and you can't pick yourself up by your bootlaces. You can't use internal forces within the same system to cause acceleration and a change of motion. Okay, so that's the first law. Second law, loosely translated is, uh, or, or described as F equals MA. So the acceleration that you give to an object is directly proportional to the force applied. Uh, and you need a greater force to uh, accelerate a greater mass. Okay. Now this is not the form that Newton originally put it in. He had it as uh, related to impulse. Um, the change in momentum over time, of the time required to change that momentum, is uh, equal to the force. Okay. So uh, these two are actually equivalent statements because change in momentum is uh, mass times change in velocity and then you've got this change in time factor as well which is so you can see change in velocity over change in time is equal to acceleration so F equals MA is how we typically state it so this describes the um, the direction of the force required to cause acceleration so same force same direction and it also describes um, the proportionality of it it's a linear relationship so if you want twice the acceleration, you have twice the force. And, and the proportionality constant is the mass. So the larger the mass, the larger the force required to cause that acceleration. Twice the mass, twice the force required for the same acceleration. Um, could be in the form of A equals F over M if you want to use it to describe acceleration more than force. Okay, so it can be uh, abused as just a mathematical statement, but the mathematical statement is a way of summarizing the concept. Okay, remember the concept, the concept, the concept. And the last one, which gives people the most trouble, is, uh, but also the one that people most well know, uh, kind of ironic that, is that for every action, or every action force, there is an equal and opposite um, reaction force. Let's, let's do it this way. <laughs> action force, reaction force. Okay, the reason this is most um, often misunderstood is because um, it's very hard to conceptualize because we don't easily isolate things uh, into systems. If we're talking about um, one trolley, 
Um, and, uh, well no, let's make it a car, under power. Um, there's the exhaust with smoke coming out. Um, or if it's an electric car you won't have that, but anyway. Um, and it's accelerating. So it's accelerating in this direction. That also means from Newton's second law that there is a force uh, either pulling or pushing it in this direction. And it seems to be an unbalanced force. But in reality, we are just considering the, the vehicle itself as a closed system. So we consider only the force acting on the vehicle um, to propel it forward. In reality, there is force, uh, as this vehicle pushes against the road, the road experiences a force in this direction that is equal and opposite to the force experienced by the tyre pushing the vehicle in this direction. Okay, so you can say the road is applying a force to accelerate the car. The car is also applying a force to accelerate the road. The only thing is, um, the force, going back to Newton's second law, proportionate to the mass of the road and the earth that it's connected to is so small that the acceleration generated is so minimal that you don't notice it. Okay, But for the car, which is much, much smaller than the earth, that same force applied does accelerate the car a noticeable amount. So, uh, yeah, action-reaction force is very difficult. If you have two people standing and uh, pushing off each other, and they're standing on a skateboard each, okay, so they push off each other. Um, one of them is, uh, you'd say this person on the left applies a force to the person on the right, pushing them that way. The person on the right applies a force to the person on the left, and it's balanced. But if it's balanced, how do they move apart? How do they uh, achieve some sort of acceleration in equal and opposite directions, and uh, equal amounts in opposite directions if they're the same mass? How do they achieve that um, when the forces are balanced? Well, the answer is we can look at this as uh, individual sections. Okay, so if we consider the left-hand side only, okay, a force has been applied to the person on the left-hand side push them, an unbalanced force, because we're only considering this internal kind of system bit here. But then for the second person, they're going to experience force pushing them that way as well. If we consider the system as a whole, uh, let's, let's write that, the system as a whole, there are no external forces acting, and so when we're considering the system as a whole, we have to consider the centre of gravity of the entire system. There is no acceleration of the centre of gravity. Okay, so the, the center of mass, center of gravity, um, the, the acceleration is zero. And this is why you start talking about the center of uh, mass, the velocity of the center of mass, the momentum of the center of mass, because when you're considering a system, it's so much more useful to consider. Okay, um, another one more example of uh, action reaction forces that tend to confuse people. You have circular motion. Okay, if you have an object that's uh, like a vehicle or a car that's traveling around a corner in circular motion, we will always say that there is an unbalanced force towards the center. And we call that the centripetal force, Fc. Okay? And it has to be unbalanced. If it's not unbalanced, there's no force causing a change in direction, uh, causing that change in velocity over time, which is your acceleration. Remember, F equals ma. Force unbalanced leads to an acceleration. If we consider the earth and the uh, road, so the earth that the car is sitting on, there is a force going in the opposite direction. Okay, There is a force going in the opposite direction. So when we're talking about an unbalanced centripetal force, we're considering a system that does not include the thing which the force acts upon. Okay. So that unbalanced force is acting on the system, and the force uh, and the system itself is applying a force on everything else. And that's how the force pairs balance. There is no unbalanced force in the universe. Every for one more example, one more example, just to just to really drive this home. You have a plank. You have a. Uh, this is from Paul Hewitt's conceptual physics. Um, and he has 60 questions to really test your understanding. A, uh, a hand, this is my hand representation, comes down and breaks the board. 
it applies three, I think he uses even these numbers, 3,000 newtons of force onto the plank to break it. How much force does the plank apply in return? Well, the answer is, it has to be 3,000 newtons. Okay? Otherwise, um, there's no force. Like, the plank can only apply the same amount of force that is applied to it. It happens in this case that um, enough force has been applied to cause an acceleration of these uh, particles in slightly different directions, overcoming the forces internally here. Okay? Same forces applied on the hand that the hand applies, applies to the plank. If it doesn't break, you'll feel it a lot more. <laughs> but that's a different description. Okay, I've laboured on for that well enough. Really important to understand these concepts, get the frame of reference right in your mind, and um, everything else kind of falls into place quite nicely.